Good day to you viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Preceptrix British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. And what boring black box have we got for you today? Well, I was recently asked, which is my favourite portable? Now that's a tricky one. I'm very, very keen on the Teak 101s, but they're only the panel top ones. I'm very keen on the Decker Style No. 4 Teak machine. Uh, again, only with the panel top ones. I'm very keen on some of the more obscure portables. Uh, in better quality finishes perhaps or with double spring motors which usually indicates better quality anyway um, but this is one of my favorites <laughs> I have a teak version of this which I bought would you believe from the leading dealer yes the last time I went to the NVCF and uh, I can't find it typical but this one came in from a clearance the square and I did it's still it's dried out and it needs a little bit of tidying after the damn good polish but it works beautifully and it illustrates my favorite portables I don't know why I've I suppose because these are genuine and provably genuine great war portables when you hear of the trench type deckers most of which are not of the right period, they're normally 1920s, but I've got one which is probably 1913 and I've got a couple of others which differ slightly from it, which may be trench ones, you never know but these ones were photographed at the time with soldiers in the trenches, so we know that these it's an Apollo, there we go, it's an Apollo and all the sound boxes say Grand Prix Milan 1906, but that was <laughs> that's not for this model <laughs> Uh, made by or retailed in this country by Crees and Stavridi. Um Bunhill Row, I think. Anyway, very plain portable. Um, you'll notice that this is a motorboard, but you can't access the motor. You've got to go in from underneath. And they do have a horrible feeling. Well, if you get one of these and the turntable appears jammed, don't push the turntable. Unscrew the bottom. What's happened is the speed control underneath here has jumped off and is... Um, holding the motor so don't uh, don't do anything drastic well how do we assemble it it's very simple as you see there there is the tone arm just remove it from its clip and it's got a couple of pins there you go and on the fitting there there are springs left and right now what you do is you push it into the right hand side hole and then it should click and there you are. And it's as simple as that. It's a little bit boxy, but a lovely machine. And it has a, a very interesting... Oh dear, this, this is a bit of a nuisance. A bit difficult to do it one-handed, Mrs. Oh, I man it, obviously. Um, there we go. You can take the end off. Oh, we'll take the arm off. There we go. That'll be easier. It's a bit tight. We'll put that back in there. There we go. That leaves you with that. And that is designed... To have with a slightly bigger pathé fitting on there so you can actually fit a pathé sound box on there to play pathé discs because this was made in switzerland so we'll put the fitting it's on a ball catch there we go there we go it clicks into place the sound box is also on a ball catch but playing records with a needle at that angle will not do them any good and i ain't gonna do it so let's try a record because they do sound loud. Um, what shall we play you? This will be a good one of the period, a homochord. And it's number 4245. Hello, hello, who's your lady friend? Sung by Jack Charman. Right, I'll just put some steam in this. I can't remember if this is single sprung or double. I think it's single. And we'll use it initially with the Apollo sound box, which I will tilt back to a kinder angle. There we go. Move that slightly. There we go. Just to, uh, that's better. Yeah, when I 
someone strolling there came up to him and winked and said, Hello, hello, who's your lady friend? Hello, hello, I haven't rebuilt that sound box. <laughs> I've forgotten that. Right, let's take that off then. And the advantage of this is the fact that you can bung a Meltrope 3 on there. Yes, I know it's not authentic, but there we go. And we'll start off old Jack Charman again. There we go. Great, that's typical of the song of the period. Let's try another one. I'll put you down a moment, so have a look uh, look through there at all that rubbish. <laughs> Let's have a look. What else can we play? Uh, hopefully Billy Williams will find... What's that one? Oh, that's quite good. Um, maybe not. Oh, yes, the Ulan's Call. It's a favourite record, or favourite record. 1-61014 played by the Earl of Lonsdale's Private Military Band. Put some more steam into it. And change the needle. There we go. Right. Here we go. Oh dear, that's not very good. Dropped it. That's a very good needle. We'll have to try another one. Go and find another one. Oh. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Well, that's not, that should be alright. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> Sorry, viewers. You can't get the kernels, can you? But you occasionally get the nuts. No, we will have to get the I know I've got some somewhere. 
this is what happens after the Whitney Grandpa gathering. All the stuff is in the wrong place. Particularly the boxes of needles. That's better. Right. We'll try that again. There we go, it was jolly good wasn't it? Let's try another one. Rather enjoying this. This is what I do quite often viewers when I'm not up at the ministry. I um, play, re play records. Um, let's have a look. Oh yes, that's one of my favourites. We won't play that. We won't play that either, it's too late. Ah. I should be more organised, shouldn't I? But I'm not, so... <laughs> Ah, there we go. That's about right, isn't it? Ragtime hits. With the winner record two two four eight. Uh, what date would that be? About nineteen fourteen, I suppose. If it started at two thousand. No, it could be nineteen eleven, nineteen twelve, couldn't it? Twelve. Uh, something. Oh well, I don't know.
That's a two part record. Do you know, I think we'll play the second part. Here we go. We turn over, put some more steam into it. I enjoyed that. That mysterious rag and um, the ragtime violin. Here we go. Change the. Oh, we don't need to change the needle, do we? There we go. Right, we'll go with the second part. There we go, that's delightful. I think we'll try one more record. Don't want to bore you after all, viewers. More than usual, anyway. <laughs> uh, put that carefully. You don't want to damage that. I think that's my only copy of that one. I don't believe it's probably a rare record. It's just I don't happen to have it. I probably have, actually, now thinking about it. Yes, I'm sure I've seen another copy in the records from the farm. But I don't intend to break a copy, just because I happen to have a second. That would not be very bright, would it? Oh, mm, I wonder if we should really play that sort of thing. No, um, no certainly not that. Or that. Um, well, it doesn't look like they will have a sec another record. I know, why don't we play Come Josephine in My Flying Machine? Some by Ada Jones and the American Quartet. It's a Xenophone Twin 1193. I don't think I've played this one for ages. That's part of the fun of owning these machines and the records. A lot of silly people just have the records sitting on the shelves, but I uh, and I do as well. <laughs> but I do actually play some of them. Uh, not all of them, obviously, but uh, some of them. Here we go. Oh, you 
yeah. We'll try that again because Mickey Mouse was not on this record. That was jolly good. I wish I could find my copy of Billy Williams. Uh, what was it? Uh, ballooning with my ballooning girl. Great favourite of mine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's lovely portable. I do like. It's one of my favourites. I can't think of a better one offhand that I like more. But there we are. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.